My first ever taste of the Pro Controllers was the Xbox One Elite Controller. Since its release, I've watched from the sidelines as others put the controller through its paces. I'm sure you're all aware of the problems that plague this controller. Grips peeling off, trigger stops breaking, overly sensitive paddles, and good old stick drift. When I bought my first Elite Controller, I was lucky enough to have yet to experience these drawbacks. But at the time, it set my gold standard for what a good Pro Controller can offer. I still have it, and it still serves me well, much better than my Series 2, which started experiencing drift on the right stick after two months of use. But I started to wonder, are there cheaper alternatives out there? A controller that incorporates the features of the Elite Controller and its competitors like Scuff and Razer, but at a cheaper price. Join me in my endeavor to find out what is the perfect controller. Power A Enhanced Wired Controller At first I started out small, with the Power A Enhanced Wired Controller for Xbox One. For starters, it uses micro USB. As terrible as that is, this controller has the Elite's best feature, mappable back buttons. While there's only two, what I like about this one is how the buttons are on the handles of the controller. The placement feels so natural, and if there were just two more, this controller would be so much better. It feels just like your average Xbox One controller. The back buttons are the only thing that makes this controller comparable to the Elite. But what about trigger stops, and replaceable sticks? Well, there are none, but that brings us to the PDP Faceoff Deluxe Audio Wired Controller. It's a Nintendo Switch controller, so unless you have a Switch that makes this controller a PC only one. But as a controller, this almost makes the cut as a contender to the Elite controller. We have swappable sticks, but only with one extended stick. As for the triggers, they are just buttons, which is about as good as trigger stops. And again, two mappable buttons in a very comfortable spot. Good controller, but still not what I was looking for. Which leads us to the Power A Fusion Pro Wired Controller. Don't buy it. The paddles break. Metal on plastic? What were they thinking? As an Elite controller, it was a 10 out of 10, but I doubt it could last as long as an Elite controller without breaking. Next. The Victrix Gambit Controller. This controller is godly. With adjustable trigger stops, a selection of different sticks plus one extended one, and four mappable buttons that rest on the handles. For a while, this was my all-time favorite controller. While tan pricey, it is still cheaper than the Elite controllers and its competition, and what amazing value you get. I can't wait to see what Victrix would do with a second controller. But I still wasn't satisfied. There had to be something else out there. Something more. For only 70 bucks Canadian, this is our next controller. The Bionic Vulcan for both PC and Android is a great controller, it really is, but a few drawbacks. No trigger stops, and the four well-placed mappable buttons are locked to a select few combinations via a switch. Two are for the ABXY buttons, and the other two are for the bumpers, triggers, and stick clicks. That's a bit disappointing. Unlike the Victrix and Faceoff controllers, instead of removing the faceplate to get the thumbsticks, you can unscrew the sticks instead. At a price of only 70 bucks, this controller is a steal, but still not quite what I was looking for. Going back to the Nintendo Switch camp, I decided to try out the Surge Switchpad Pro controller. Another third-party Nintendo Switch controller, but with the added benefits of four mappable back buttons. While I like the lower ones, the top ones are nightmare fuel, requiring you to press them with the sides of your middle fingers to actuate them. Despite the cockadoochie placement of the mappable buttons, it's a fine controller. Instead of complaining about the lack of trigger stops and stick extensions, I made my own. For the trigger stops, I used hot glue, and for stick extensions, I used two off-brand control freaks. I gotta say, I really like the shape of the controller, but even with the adjustments I made, it still wasn't what I was looking for, so I went back to the drawing board. If I couldn't find the perfect controller, I figured I'd make it. This is a generic Xbox One controller with Bionic Trigger Stop Grips and the Collective Minds Eliminator Mod Pack. This is a beast of a Frankenstein controller. 
The mappable buttons may stick out a tad too much for my liking, but are still in a comfortable spot and they work. While I can use the built-in mods, I just choose not to because I don't know where to begin. As for stick extensions, I use the ones I was using on a switch pad. A fine controller indeed, but I still long for something... more. Through browsing on YouTube, I fell into a very interesting rabbit hole. Gyro controls. Thanks to the likes of Narrow, Jib Smart, and Tech Geekster, I was introduced to the wonderful world of gyroscopic motion. I trekked to the nearest GameStop and picked up their only used PS4 controller with my chump change, and Best Buy for a Collective Minds Eliminator mod pack built for a PS4 controller. And then, the perfect controller. Because of the precision offered by Gyro Aim, I no longer need stick extensions. Trigger stops are optional at this point because if your aim is quick enough, you'll likely get the first shots off first. And the mappable back buttons make this a deadly controller. How does it work? Well, I use the stick for broad movements and do the real aiming with gyro. Contrary to popular opinion, motion controls are not a gimmick. They open up a whole new world of possibilities that regular controllers don't have. I can tilt the controller to perform actions I have mapped to the gyro's tilt functions, which gives you more customization, and it's not cheating either. Zim Nexus, which is in fact a controller that uses similar features to the S4 Windows in the sense of the gyro where you can move your controller to actually help with recoil, along with remapping buttons to do certain other features, so we're going to get into that today. And it has similar features to what DS4 Windows has been found to be able to do, using the gyro section. I want you guys to see this Zim Nexus controller, so if you see any streamer using this live on stream with a hand cam or anything of the sort, you know its capabilities, you know what potential this controller has to help somebody within the game. The streamers are in a tough place. Legitimate streamers who have never done a single thing wrong and just stream their content as they should. And if that is the case, it will be deemed as a cheating device. Well, it already is by the fact that you can control recoil just by pointing your controller down. Exactly the same way as you can with the DS4 windows on the gyro section. Are you fucking stupid? It takes skill to use gyro aiming consistently. You won't turn into an aim god overnight. You have to retrain your muscle memory to use it. You must free your mind. In all seriousness, I personally use gyro aim more than regular stick or mouse aiming. If you're willing to take the time to customize bindings for your entire PC game library, you'll essentially have a controller that plays the same for both keyboard and mouse and controller-centered games. Being a fan of gyroscope, I decided to order a controller that didn't have it as an afterthought. I got a Steam controller. Despite its unconventional design, I find it to be a rather revolutionary controller once you have your controls tuned just right, and the gyroscope feels much more accurate and responsive than the PS4 controllers. Although the controller failed to catch on, it did find its niche and lives on in a humble but obscure existence. It encapsulates everything I now want in a controller back paddles, toil control over bindings, and phenomenal gyroscope and comfort. I don't know about most people, but this mad experiment feels good in hand. Although I am not the best player in the world, I did notice a substantial improvement in accuracy using these controllers, and I'm not going back. So there you have it, two pretty much perfect controllers. That's enough mayhem for today. Make sure to subscribe, share, and like the video, and stay awesome, friends. This is a reminder that I'm now selling shirts. And no, I don't mean something lame like a T with my logo on it. No, uh, these are original designs by yours truly. We have the skull with glowing eyes. My favorite is the blue one. And the adorable hungry dino. Links are in the description.